right, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the November 27th session of Montgomery County Council. And we will begin today, as we often do, with an invocation from Baha'i Kardashian Singh from the Guru Gobind Singh Foundation in Rockville. Dr. Kardashian Singh. And I invite those here, please rise as you're able. Jagat Jalanda Rakhle Apani Kirpa Thar Jet Dwarai Ubre जित द्वारे उबरे तित्ते लिहु उबार ओ ग्रेशियस गॉड क्रिएटर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स वी टर्न टू यू टुडे टू ब्लेस गाइड एंड इंस्पायर आर इलेक्टेड लीडर्स देर फैमिलीज their hardworking staff members, to make the difference and to benefit the citizens of Montgomery County, one of the most diverse, vibrant counties in Maryland and this great nation. Please allow our leaders to serve for peace, justice, and equality with the humility and compassion. Bless us with the ability and strength to address the challenges we face today with integrity and honesty, and work to build a strong, respecting, loving, understanding community, county, state, and nation. Let the color of our skin, the faith we believe in, the language we speak not divide us. Instead, please God, help us to recognize and celebrate the diversity exists all around us. Let us be united in purpose and give us the understanding that welfare of all humankind is the purpose of those who lead us. O oh God, this world is burning in the fire of hatred, ignorance, and greed. Please, whoever coming to you, whichever door that person may be using, please save and guide. Amen. Vai Guruji ka khalsa, Vai Guruji. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was very nice. And now we will move to our items of general business. And we have no announcements. We have action on approval of the minutes and the minutes for October 30th and the closed session minutes for October 30th were distributed in advance to all council members. Are there any corrections? All right, not seeing any. Those are submitted as approved as submitted. And now we will move to a number of public hearings followed by action and we have five of them. Um, so what will happen is there may be a person who will testify, there may not, and the council will take a motion after each public hearing is closed and we'll have a show of hands. <coughs> so our first public hearing is on an amendment to the FY19 to 24 capital improvements program and a special appropriation to the FY19 capital budget for the Department of General Services in the amount of $3,267,000 for a salt storage facility. Action is tentatively scheduled immediately following the hearing. And is there anyone who will be speaking today? Please come forward. Dan Wilhelm. Oh, 
for the record, my name is Dan Wilhelm. I'm president of the Greater Colesville Citizens Association. GCCA strongly supports the CIP amendment to build a permanent salt storage facility. We were dismayed when we learned that the county started using Site 2 for a temporary storage facility. To our knowledge, this occurred after the site had been declared sur surplus and the general development agreement was approved for new mixed-use development that uses this site. The executive branch has repeatedly promised the community that Site 2 would be demolished well before the preliminary plan is approved. Since the preliminary plan is expected to be approved in two days, uh, Thursday this week, the site should have been demolished at the latest about a year ago. Now we are warning that the demolition is just getting started and can't be completed until the salt is removed and the new storage facility built. Therefore, we urge you to approve the f this funding and direct, ask the executive branch to build a new facility and remove the salt as quickly as possible. The failure of the county to fulfill its commitment and impact is impacting the ability of GLDC to undertake grading, install utilities, and build master plan roads. That in turn will likely impact the ability of FDA to access the US 29 BRT at Tech Road Station and may impact, at least for a time, the ability of BRT to reduce congestion in the area. Anyway, we thank, ask you to support this. I also want to thank the council for all its work for the East County and the whole county while you, over the time you've been here, and especially for the four of you who are moving on to other things. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, Glenn, can you just give us a quick summary here and your recommendation? Sure. Um, the, as Mr. Wilhelm mentioned, this is a, needed to be able to be moved so that the Viva White Oak can go forward. Um, it's a much larger facility that's out at White Oak right now than what's really needed. What's going to be built at Crabs Branch in Shady Grove, the next the maintenance facility there, is a 25,000 ton uh, storage facility. The cost is $3,267,000. Uh, the design's going to happen in the spring and the construction would happen basically over the course of the, uh, the rest of the, the calendar year. Uh, it'll be open sometime probably late in the early next year at the very latest, probably before the next uh, snow season. Um, and uh, that's really about it, other than, other than Greater Colesville, also the Tamarack Triangle Civic Association supports this. Okay. Uh, it did not go to the T&E committee because it was felt this was a pretty much a, of a, a necessary thing. There wasn't much time to, to have that meeting, so there's no committee recommendation, at least as of that at this point. Okay. Well, we need a motion. It's been moved by Mr. Berliner, seconded by Council Vice President Navarro. All those in favor, show of hands. And that is unanimous. Thank you. And our next item is a public hearing on a supplemental appropriation to the Montgomery County Public Schools FY19 capital budget and an amendment to the FY1924 capital improvements program planned life cycle asset replacement in the amount of 603,000 to fund eligible projects through the aging schools program. And uh, council staff has recommended approval. There are no speakers for this hearing. So it's been moved approval by Ms. Florine, seconded by Ms. Navarro. All those in favor, show of hands. That is unanimous. And our next item is a public hearing on a special appropriation to the county government's FY19 operating budget, Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security, in the amount of $200,000 for emergency management planning, response, and recovery. And this one is a significant issue we're grappling with as a community in a country, and we have two people here to speak to it, Meredith Weisel and Lawrence Dorney. Meredith, on behalf of the Jewish Community Relations Council. And is there a Lawrence Dorney here? Perhaps not. Meredith. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Council President Reamer, members of the council. Um, I wish I was here not testifying on this because I feel like I just did this last year. And um, I'm here just for the record on behalf of the Jewish Community Relations Council, um, which for the record, represents over 100 Jewish organizations and synagogues throughout the entire DC metro area. I wanna just sort of real quick quote 
which I'm sure most have seen in the news, but according to just recently released in the past few weeks, recent FBI data, hate crimes in the United States have jumped up 17% in 2017, a 37% spike in crimes that actually targeted Jews and Jewish institutions. But beyond that, <coughs> there was a 23% increase in religious-based crimes, and 60% of that accounted towards attacks towards the Jewish community. But it should also be noted that with, there was an 18% increase in race-based crimes, 24% increase against Latinos, 100% increase against Arab Americans, 20% against Asian Pacific Americans, 63% against Native Americans, and a 5% increase against the LGBT community. And these statistics cannot and must not continue to become an acceptable norm. Again, I wish I wasn't here testifying for this, but I do want to say that we are extremely supportive of the county executive's supplemental, excuse me, special appropriation. It's something that is greatly needed to help our faith-based institutions, not just the Jewish community, but all of our faith-based institutions. What happened in Pittsburgh was awful. Unfortunately, it's not the only incident, as most of you know. We are seeing this on a regular basis still. JCRC is tracking data that doesn't actually always get reported to. So this is just the reported data that we know. We know there's a lot more that is going on. So $200,000 will go very quickly. So I do hope for those of you returning to the County Council will also consider when you're taking up the budget and the new county executive will also consider as we're taking up the budget again to look for more dollars because this is gonna go very fast. And when we know that the money that went last year went very fast and we are getting constant requests from our synagogues, from our Jewish day schools, from other faith communities that we work with as to how can they better prepare for incidents like this that unfortunately we think are going to continue. So with that, we thank the council for considering this special appropriation. Thank you so much for your leadership and for being here to testify on behalf of this appropriation. And I'll just join you in noting that it's not only, sadly, uh, violence targeting people of Jewish faiths. We've seen churches attacked with gun you know, shooters so, so frequently over the last several years. And in fact, before the Tree of Life shooting in Pittsburgh, that same window of time, there was a, an attack uh, in a church in Kentucky. I think it was Kentucky. Um, and uh, so for some reason, shooters are targeting communities of faith because that's where people congregate and they're trying to um, wreak their violence there. So this appropriation is intended to help support the public safety need of all of our communities who are unfortunately targeted for violence. And uh, so thank you. Keith, anything to add? Uh, just to say, we do have executive staff here if the council has any questions. Um, the council did approve a similar request last year as you heard on the capital side. This is an operating expense uh, appropriation request, so it would go towards operating related costs, uh, most likely staffing, uh, security staffing. Um, and as, as also noted, the, the $200,000 is one time. There is no assumption at this point that there would be additional dollars. That's something that the next council, next executive will have to uh, consider as part of the next budget. Thank you so much. All right, it's been moved by Mr. Berliner, Second. seconded by Ms. Navarro. All those in favor, show of hands. And that is unanimous. Thank you. And our next item is public hearing on a special appropriation to the FY19 operating budget of the Montgomery County Government Department of Health and Human Services in the amount of $92,460 for the African American Health Program. And action will follow the hearing. We have Pat Grant here to speak with us. And Pat is a member of the African American Health Program's Executive Committee. And thank, we we'll thank uh, Mr. Leventhal and the committee for reviewing this in a timely manner. Ms. Grant. I just wanted to, on behalf, uh, of, on behalf of the African American Health Program uh, Executive Committee, 
and the African American Health Program. We really want to thank you for putting this on the agenda today. Um, we are we feel that these positions that we have requested uh, will help us further our mission in trying to eliminate the many health disparities that we see in our community. And um, with the data that we have now, we'll be able to pinpoint better where those disparities are. And these posi positions will help us with that uh, and delivering um, better services and have better outcomes. So to each of you, thank you so much for um, your consideration today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Very good. Well, been moved by Mr. Leventhal, seconded by Mr. Rice. All those in favor, show of hands. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you again. All right, and now we have a public hearing on an amendment to the FY19 to 2024 Capital Improvements Program and a special appropriation to the FY19 Capital Budget for Montgomery County Government Department of Police in the amount of $6,555,000 550, for the Public Safety Communications Center. And we have Robert Nelson to testify, and I will turn it to Susan Farrick for a an outline of the issue, please. Good afternoon. Um, this, as you mentioned, that this is an amendment to the CIP as well as a special appropriation to the capital budget for FY19. Uh, this is additional funding to purchase the current public safety communication center property, which is currently um, where they operate out of, but it's currently in leased space. This purchase is expected to um, save about $1.2 million in lease costs. The Public Safety Committee did review it on November 15th and recommended approval three to zero. Thank you. Mr. Nelson. Well, good afternoon. Well, I'm Robert Nelson from Goshen, and I want to take a moment to thank the members of the County Council who will be departing this afternoon for their many terms of service. Now, over the years, we've had numerous points of contention but I must say on behalf of the Up County, you always came to listen and to try to understand the many needs of the most growing part of the county. And I wish you well as you take on new ventures. Well, regarding the amendment for the Capital Improvements Program, the Up County Citizens Advisory Board has been recommending the construction of the 6th District Police Station serving Gaithersburg and Montgomery Village for many, many years uh, to facilitate access to the already purchased site uh, for the new police station. The UCAB also advocated the extension of Watkins Mill Road. Currently, the state's construction of the new I-270 interchange is well underway. And it's, I don't understand why, but District 6 police station is the only one that is, does not have a permanent uh, facility. It's uh, currently leasing space on the opposite side of I-270 from Montgomery Village. So the Public Safety Communication Center is located only two miles from the new District 6 police station site, which is already acquired. So my comment would be, as an alternative, why not co-locate a brand new Public Safety Communication Center along with the 6 district police station. Why hand off millions of dollars to the landlord of an aging 32-year-old building when that funding might be better utilized to expedite the construction of the much-needed 6th district police station? Why should Montgomery Village need to wait until at least 2025 to have a permanent police station? Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. And now that we've heard from the public and we have our staff recommendation and a committee recommendation. It's been moved by, oh wait, this one I'm hearing does not need to be moved. Public safety recommended, thank you. Um, uh, right, so all those in favor, show of hands. And that is unanimous. Okay. Good, now we'll move to the consent calendar. And uh, thank you. It's been moved by Ms. Florine, seconded by Mr. Berliner. And uh, there are many people named today for
commissions and boards in the county. We really appreciate all of you who are stepping up to serve in different ways. This is a crucial part of our community civic infrastructure. And um, it seems like Mr. Leggett's getting a lot of people in <laughs> under, the, <laughs> under the line. Uh, so, but you can think of it as 90 resumes. You won't have to read, Mr. Elliott. <laughs> so, uh, um, I should correct that. I'm sure you did read them. They were in your packet. <laughs> So, indeed, as did we all. Uh, included on this uh, consent calendar is a report from the work group on people with developmental differences, which is a significant effort. Uh, we have a light on, Mr. Leventhal. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I did want to call the council's attention to that item that you just mentioned. It's um, item HH on the consent calendar. And I really want to thank the members of the Commission on People with Disabilities who comprised a work group on meeting the needs of residents with developmental differences. All of us understand the urgency of government sticking up for those who most need us. Um, we represent um, a lot of people with resources. We represent a lot of people who are very fortunate, but we also represent people who, but for the involvement of government, just could not make it independently. And those with developmental differences really need our attention and care. The manner in which their care is reimbursed is very complex. It's a complex network of federal Medicaid funding, uh, which flows through the State Developmental Disabilities Authority. It is primarily funded by the state. The county augments the funding in a number of different ways. But because we are in touch with local providers like the ARC, like Jubilee, like Community Support Services, like um, uh, JESA and others, we can be the most effective advocates at the state level, and also there's much more that we can do at the county level. So um, especially for those members who will be joining the HHS committee, I'm delighted that this document is available as a resource um, that the next council can take it up and continue to advocate for this subpopulation, which so needs our attention. The recommendations of the work group can be found on page two of the memo. Um, I commend the entire report to the attention of all council members who will be returning, and particularly those who will be returning to the HHS committee. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask: is so is th this is Medicaid funding as well as state funding that we're that well, the it, recommendation? Um, the answer is yes, but yeah. Medicaid funding is augmented by the state so it's and it's administered by the state. It's administered by the State Developmental Disabilities Administration (DDA), which is in the midst of changing uh, the procedures that providers have to adhere to to get reimbursed. There's a lot of anxiety among providers. Um, I recommended at the committee meeting yesterday that um, this briefing be provided to those members of our General Assembly delegation. I know Senator Cheryl Kagan is here, um, th who I, I know many of our members of the General Assembly delegation are very concerned about this subpopulation, but uh, like even I, until I read this report, don't thoroughly and fully understand the funding streams and the challenges that are presented for providers and for developmentally disabled clients um, when the rules are changed. So. Uh, uh, over a long period of time. There's a lack of certainty about, um, for example, we talked about sponsored employment. It's not clear whether, uh, we all want people with developmental differences to be able to um, uh, be independent and work and make a contribution to their communities, and yet some of the agencies that are placing uh, these clients in jobs are finding that they're not certain whether they can claim reimbursement for their work because of the changing rules at the state level. That's just one example uh, that was brought up yesterday. So um, there's much that the county does and can continue to do, but we can also be advocates at the state level, and I hope that we will continue um, to stick up for this population that so needs our attention and care. And we will. Thank you so much. Appreciate your leadership on those issues over many years. So that report is received. Ms. Florine. Thank you. Um, I suppose it's uh, ironic or just fun that the usual issue is uh, before the next council. Uh, that's uh, item A on the uh, consent calendar, the uh, OLO's report on private development and public infrastructure. So uh, I, it's the thing everyone's been talking about for the past 30, 40 years. And I uh, wish the new uh, council well as, as it uh, reviews the report. I hope uh, it'll be a good introduction for the uh, new Fed committee. 
uh, to get briefed on these sorts of issues. Um, I took a look at the report and regrettably it did not address some of all the um, obligations that the uh, Montgomery County um, imposes on projects such as stormwater management and forest conservation, I think. A few other things you might wanna look into that uh, as you tally up uh, who pays for what. But uh, nonetheless, I think it uh, will be a uh, good beginning for the next uh, uh, Fed committee and I, um, I'm sure you will enjoy that conversation going forward. Thank you so much. We're working on the agenda now. <laughs> Very good. Um, that is our consent calendar. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, raise your hand. Very good, unanimous. And now we will move to the bicycle master plan. And the t and &E committee has recommended approval with amendments and Mr. Berliner. Thank you, Mr. Reber and colleagues. I think it is sort of interesting that this will be the, the last official action that uh, I will lead our council in prior to departing. Um, when we began this work 12 years ago, for many of us, our county actually hadn't really embraced bicycling. It really had not, it was behind the times. And now I'm proud that with the work of all of us, including our Department of Transportation and our planners, we're, where, we're almost where we need to be, and we're getting there. And this plan really is a, is a big step forward. And I really wanna tip my hat again to the chairman and David for your really groundbreaking work. The way you went about it is really quite extraordinary. We had discussed this previously. It's an ambitious plan, but a plan that is right for our county. It is right in part because we made it clear that actually climate change is an emergency and we need to get people out of their cars. We need people to be healthier and the more we can get them safely in, bikes, in bikes, that's what we want to do. And so at fundamentally what we are seeking to do of course is to have protected bike lanes as many places as we can because that's where people feel comfortable. Many of us don't feel comfortable riding in the middle of a busy street or on even on the curb lane of a busy street. It doesn't feel safe, it may be. But this plan is really a very good plan that gets us closer to where we need to be. The one issue we had with the plan was that they, the, our planners asked us, please commit to doing X, Y, Z in this time frame. And we said, actually, we can't do that. It's not fair to the future county council. It's not fair to the future county executive who has to determine our CIP. And you folks, or the folks that come We'll have to determine actually how fast to do this, but we do have a tier one set of bike lanes that we feel strongly about and hope that our county will in fact prioritize. Um, it is really everything that we need to do going forward. We had two little changes, I believe, Dr. Orlin, one in Hillendale uh, that Mr. Hucker brought to our attention and another with respect to um, Kensington, which had been worked out with the town of Kensington and our planners and yourself came up with a resolution that actually works for everybody. So I'm not aware of any controversies going forward. Uh, did I do what I needed to do, uh, Dr. Orlin? That was good to me. Um, if anybody wants more details on those, those last minute changes, we could talk about them, but they're relatively minor. Mr. Anderson. Uh, I didn't realize this would be the last uh, act for this council, but if I just could just take a second to say what a privilege it's been to work with all of you, those of you who are leaving. Uh, in particular, I wanted to thank all of you uh, for your uh, support in our work, our agency's work. Uh, we feel that in collaborating with you, we've achieved some great things of which this bike plan is uh, the last one, but it's certainly not the only one. And uh, just wanted personally to express my uh, appreciation and uh, affection and respect for each and every uh, one of you. Uh, I'd also, I don't like to speak from notes as you may have noticed, but I don't wanna forget anybody. I wanna uh, publicly thank uh, Dave Onsbacher, the head of this great team who among many other things took me seriously when I said we wanted to have the best bike plan ever written and I believe that he and his team have delivered. Also, John Ryder, Stephen Tu, and Russ Provost have been 
on the core team. In addition, Chris McGovern, Melissa Noakes, Chris Pfeiffer, Brian Kent, Kevin Leonard, Katie Mincerini, Laura Hodgson, Matt Folden, and also mentioned Matt Johnson, who's now at DOT, but who really spent so many hours working at This is an extremely labor-intensive, unusually labor-intensive process to analyze every segment of the street network in the entire county. I want to thank them and say how proud I am of them. I believe that we have the finest uh, planning team anywhere, and they certainly exemplify that. So thank you for your indulgence. Thank you, Casey. This is uh, certainly a testament to your work at the planning board. It's a big priority for you coming in to help remake this county and make it more bike friendly. And uh, as Mr. Berliner said, I think that the comments that I hear from people in the community are that this county is now on board and uh, we're making a lot of changes. We have a long way to go, but we're making a lot of changes and there's a lot of positive momentum. And I think that uh, your leadership at the commission has been a major factor in that. So thanks for taking this on and working it through and bringing it to us. And uh, it has been fairly consensus driven here at the council, um, fortunately. So <laughs> that's very nice. So thank you. Mr. Erwin. I, all I was going to say was that when you make your motion now, if you could say that you're adopting the plan as, as amended by the staff recommendations on page one and two, so it formally is included. So moved. All right. Been moved. Mr. Hucker, second. And um, is this a show of, show of hands? All those in favor of the Bicycle Master Plan, show of hands. That is unanimous. Thank you. All right. So I think we're going to take a momentary break because we're a little ahead of schedule. Uh, what we do, I want to just thank uh, Councilmember Howie Dennis is here, former Councilmember Dennis, and Councilmember Silverman, Steve Silverman is here somewhere, he was. Cheryl Kagan from the Senate is here. Incoming Councilmember Evan Glass is here. If I missed you, send me a text message. Uh, yeah, don't tweet me, just text me. <laughs> Reamer left me out. All right, so we're going to take a break, and we will reconvene at 3.30 for our next agenda item, which is going to be a fun farewell to the 18th County Council. So if you'll please hang tight until 3.30, mill about, enjoy yourselves, catch up with old friends, and we'll reconvene. Thanks. Here we go. I've been using this all year. All right. Where is my, here it is. Okay, everybody. Um, first of all, I think we're all following a story very closely about a security incident that Walter Reed, hearing that it may be a drill, or keep monitoring that situation. And if we hear anything official, we'll let you know. Um, so now we're going to turn to a special moment in our program so to speak, a uh, special moment on our agenda, which is a, uh, a tribute for the 18th County Council and specifically recognizing the work of our outgoing council members. Uh, we have a special guest here with us today. The county executive is in the house and uh, he will share some, some thoughts with us in a moment. Uh, we're gonna have a video tribute um, and we have some some gifts for our outgoing council members 
Uh, I want to just express my personal appreciation to each of those council members who is um, you know, finishing up their service here at the council. Uh, you know, this has been, the four of you have been really titans of an era of county council uh, lawmaking and county politics. And it, um, you have really defined the council and uh, the community's perception of the council in so many ways. And your work in so many different areas has been absolutely stellar. And on a personal note, I've learned so much from each of you. I've had the chance to do great work with each of you and to make a work, to make a difference with each of you. Um, but you have really shined in, in your different areas. I'll, I'll just look to my right and begin with Mr. Leventhal. Your work on public health has just been um, such a gift to this community. You have used your leadership position so effectively to meet the needs of, the complex needs of our community. And uh, you know the legacy you've built is gonna stand for a long time. Uh, Ms. Florine, your work on housing, zoning, master plans, economic development. As uh, you've said many times, we've, we've pretty much gone through the process of rezoning this entire county. <laughs> and uh, we've got the scars to show it, and so do you. <laughs> and uh, you are steadfast and, um, you know, just a remarkable legacy. Uh, Mr. Berliner, your work on the environment, on energy, absolutely amazing. I uh, really, uh, you know, you have been our leader and the the long list of specific accomplishments outside of the area of environmental and energy policy making is substantial just on its own, but when you look at that, that set of issues, um, you know, it's, uh, we're gonna miss you, but uh, we know each of you will be close uh, and none closer than Mark Elrich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you have defined a, an entire approach to politics in this county, and you have, I mean, that is a compliment. <laughs> and uh, no, I mean, it's true. It's like, uh, you know, I think people look at the council and they, they see you and they see what you're doing and then they often define things in relation to you. And that's a, because of how strong you are. And you're gonna be our county executive very soon. We look forward to working with you uh, but your legacy on economic justice is unrivaled and your commitments to youth and education and so many other areas. Uh, you've just had a tremendous career here and all four of you, this has been an election year and we've continued to work and, and I think that that's really a, the fact that this council has been able to continue through its business in a very smooth manner despite an election year is a testament to and, and a never ending election year, right? is a testament to each of your real civility, your, your professionalism, your seriousness, your sense of purpose, and your understanding that, you know, there's politics and there's, and there's doing our work at, here at the council. And I, I can't think of, you know, would, would, would everybody have been able to work as smoothly as, as we have worked this year uh, in this kind of context, but not for the remarkable people that, that each of you are. So thank you for being you and, uh, Good, so I am now going to turn it for a video tribute and then we'll have comments and we have comments from uh, sitting council members to the outgoing council members. So we've got, you know, a nice uh, agenda here. So Marlene, Juan, let's see the video. I, I work for all of you, I'm George Leventhal, I represent you on the Montgomery County Council. George Leventhal worked his way through the Maryland Democratic Party before becoming a member of the County Council in 2002. All in favor of uh, Council Member George Leventhal being elected as president, please raise your hands. And that is unanimous. While on the council, he was elected to the position of president twice and also served as chair of the Health and Human Services Committee. Mr. Leventhal votes yes. George was influential in the creation of the Montgomery CARES program, the county's health care system for the low income and uninsured. About 30,000 people this year in Montgomery County without health insurance will get access to a doctor 
because of the Montgomery Cares program. George also worked tirelessly to see that programs to address homelessness got the necessary funding to move ahead. We're about to check out all around the library to see if there's any homeless folks. While on the council, Montgomery County was able to end veteran homelessness and make major strides to end chronic homelessness under the direction of George. And these are the people who most need uh, the help of government. And so I've always felt uh, compelled to do what I can on a priority basis. You are working for the county? That's what I'm doing. And I can't think of uh, any priority more significant than people who don't have a roof over their head, don't have a place to stay, or sleeping in the woods, or sleeping on the street, sleeping behind 7-Eleven. Um, I've just always found it a very compelling issue. It says he lives with his parents, but it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning, and he's walking around with a great big backpack full of stuff. And it's cold. Yeah. Getting residents in Montgomery County moving was a top priority for George. We must invest in our transportation infrastructure. He was a big supporter of the inner county connector, which was completed while he was in office. Yeah, it's just so much convenient and avoid all of that traffic of 495. And he also co-founded Purple Line Now with the late Harry Sanders. This coalition of organizations pushed hard for construction of the 16-mile light Come rail on. system, which broke ground in 2017. Finally, we're going to be able to entice people out of their cars to commute by fast, safe, speedy, efficient, clean, quiet rail. And finally, one piece of legislation sponsored by George that most likely touches the most county residents is his earned sick and safe leave bill. Let me uh, say a big, big, huge thanks to uh, Council President George Leventhal. This measure put forward a mandate that every employer operating in the county must provide sick leave for those employees who work in the county. I'd like to see this measure uniform in all 50 states. That's what our goal should be. And we do want worker, basic worker protections in law affecting every state in the United States. But we have a Congress that just refuses to work with President Obama and Secretary Perez. And so they've called upon us to lead on leave, and that's what we've done. I have been singing your praises all afternoon. There is no question George Leventhal will leave the council with a legacy as a champion for health care. And through our own network of community clinics called Montgomery Cares, which I founded back in 2005. The economy, education, I've gone to many, many different schools, and transportation. I'm here to serve you and to try to find innovative solutions to some of these issues. So I just really want to thank you very, very much for your participation. After serving two terms on the Montgomery County Planning Board. You know, it was a great way to be involved, uh, but also uh, be able to, to be around for the kids. And one term as mayor of Garrett Park, Nancy Florine was elected to the county council in 2002. And that I will be faithful. During her tenure, she served as chair of the council's Planning, Housing, and Economic Development Committee. Congratulations, President Florine. Thank you and presided as president of the council in 2010. Thank you very much. And 2016. During her first term as president, she initiated the council's first fiscal plan to ensure long-term fiscal stability. What we've done is put together in a rather, I hope, a clear document how we anticipate meeting some of our ongoing obligations, retiree health insurance, uh, some of the bookkeeping things that, frankly, we have put to one side in the, in the course of this recession, putting them back into play. When I was council president and we cut the deal with the Board of Education over school funding, it never happened before. In return for additional dollars, the school system actually agreed to uh, do some things we wanted them to do in terms of how it operated. I think that was the hardest thing. And I think the most important thing. Nancy sponsored numerous pieces of legislation while on the council that created incentives and facilitated production of affordable housing, including a recent update to the moderately priced dwelling unit program, which offers more affordable homes to residents. Nancy also privatized economic development with her creation of the Montgomery Business Development Corporation, now known as the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation. 
there's nothing like a fiscal crisis uh, to focus us on priorities, this legislation is going to be long term. Our partnership is a historic commitment to growing jobs and it's our tax base. All of you here have a lot of power. As chair of the Fed Committee, Nancy led the council through numerous master plans establishing long-term visions of the community. Nancy also oversaw the revisions of the county's outdated zoning code. Ask for a copy of the zoning ordinance and you try to figure it out and then you will get a sense of what we're trying to address. Which had been in place more than 30 years. In 2014, when the new code was adopted, she and other staff enjoyed a proper burial for this overly complex document. We are really changing uh, the way that we communicate uh, in a way that's really responsive to the community that accommodates so many concerns and makes it clear for once what the rules are and how important uh, community engagement and, and thoughtful presentations uh, really are. Nancy sponsored and advocated for legislation that created property tax credit for seniors, veterans, and homeowners while standing firm in her support for new transit and roads, including the ICC and most recently Montrose Parkway East. I have been an advocate for Montrose Parkway East as long as I've been on the county council. Uh, it has routinely gotten delayed. There's too much at stake to suggest that it's not of critical importance to, the, to both the residents of that area, faced with the prospect of an enormous number of new uh, employees and jobs in that location, is breathtaking. Nancy Florine will be remembered as a no-nonsense, resilient leader who led the county through the toughest of fiscal times while working to reinforce the county tax base by attracting jobs and providing housing for county residents. I spend a few minutes talking about the things that I've been working on recently. Roger Berliner was first elected to the county council in 2006. As the District 1 council member, he represented parts of Poolsville, Happy Poolsville Day. Potomac, Bethesda, and Chevy Chase. During his time on the council, Roger made a name for himself by putting pressure on energy giant Pepco. I, for one, who've been involved in this kind of work for 25 years, have not heard a satisfactory response to ramp up its energy reliability plan. Assume with me that this is a crisis that needs to be resolved now. Absolutely now. All right? What would you do? How long would it take you not to get to average, but to the top quartile? Because I promise you, this community does not expect average in anything. Protecting the environment was also of first concern for Roger during his tenure. We will identify every building in the county that can have renewable energy. In 2014, he introduced 13 environmental and energy reform proposals to fight climate change. 12 megawatts of power will be generated by solar power in our county, enough to power 2,000 homes in Montgomery County. And I'm so proud to be part of a county that is this committed to all good things from clean energy. Roger also pledged his support of efforts to reduce the county's greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by the year 2050. I'm even more pleased to say that in Montgomery County, we are among the most sustainable communities in the United States of America. Thank you very much. You should take pride in that. During one of his terms as president of the council, Roger tackled the issue of hunger and food security. Under his watch, the council approved legislation that mandated the county executive create a plan to tackle food insecurity and update it on an annual basis. It is all of us coming together and saying, it is not okay for our brothers and sisters to be hungry in Montgomery County. It is a moral imperative that we address it and this plan puts us on the path for doing just that. This work also included the strengthening of the Smart Snack Program to help combat children's weekend hunger in Montgomery County. And now we've expanded the program, and last year we added $150,000 to expand the program, and I am hoping we will be able to add another $150,000 to expand that program so the kids that go home over the weekend, we know that they have food. Thank you. Yeah.
for kids playing. <laughs> because we don't know if they will have food otherwise. So each teacher has maybe eight to 10 children in their class that gets a bag. So we deliver these plastic tubs to each of the classrooms. The teachers give those bags to the students and then the students take them home. And hungry kids aren't great scholars, okay? We have there? <laughs> Popcorn. We need to make sure that our kids have all the food that they possibly need over the weekends. On board Chairman Roger Berliner, who will continue the meeting. Roger. While on the council, Roger chaired the Metropolitan Council of Governments and worked to get dedicated funding for Metro. Our region deserves and expects a world-class system. He will be remembered as someone who took a thoughtful approach to his work. We really talk about the farm community. These people really are salt of the earth. Bringing community members together on issues like pedestrian safety improvements. We've had too many deaths on our roads. And fighting the FAA on air traffic noise in his district. Over the past 10 months, instead of an irritation that was widely dispersed throughout the region, it has become a concentrated, amplified, and unending disturbance for many of our residents. Even in our living room, we have trouble hearing each other or the TV due to the airplane noise. Most residents purchased homes long before flight path changes and never imagined they'd be subject to constant noise and air pollution. It is unacceptable that property values quality of life and people's health <laughs> have been impacted so dramatically with so little forethought. Thank you for spending your evening with me. And I thank you for all the ways you have made our county a better place to live. Roger leaves the county council with a legacy as a pragmatic leader who worked to advance smart growth and planning for vibrant urban nodes. Mark Elrich was elected to the County Council in 2006. It took me four times and then I lost four times before I won. Prior to his arrival, he spent 19 years as a member of the Tacoma Park City Council and 17 years as a teacher with Montgomery County Public Schools. While on the council, he has served as chair of the Public Safety Committee and as a member of the Education Committee. Mark made bringing bus rapid transit to Montgomery County one of his top priorities and developed the first BRT plan for the county in 2008. BRT not only accommodates continued reasonable commercial and residential growth, it also promotes smart growth and increases property value. There's an enormous concern in the community about the county supporting levels of development with no infrastructure to make it workable. And there's an interest in the business community that realizes that you know, projects could be brought to a halt at some point if we don't demonstrate that we're going to be able to move people. <laughs> when it comes to public transit, that has been a priority, of course, for Ike and to his entire team. I want to thank them. Uh, to all the members of the County Council, uh, this is a team effort. Thank you all. I do know that it's been a special uh, passion and priority for Mark Elrich, uh, so congratulations to you and the entire uh, team here today. I knew we'd get here. I you know, didn't know it would take this long, but I knew we'd get here. In 2013, Mark took the lead in a national movement by state and local leaders to address the issue of the minimum wage. Councilmember Elrich took this on and he deserves a great deal of credit. Let's give him a, a round of applause. The council overwhelmingly voted to support raising the minimum wage in 2013. Pay people a living so they don't need to rely on welfare. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to rely on welfare. If you're in a two-earner household working full-time, um, this is on the order of you know, $360 a month. This is real money. This is not a personal thing. This is trying to do something about what to me is a really um, it's just a wrenching problem, and it's something we have the capacity to do something about. I'm Betty Cuppy. I personally am very happy, and for me it's so important that the rest of um, my, my co-workers, um, other workers, other people are educated and know that the minimum wage has gone up. And in 2017, Mark once again moved to raise the minimum wage to $15 per hour. We have a unanimous vote. 
That first attempt was vetoed by the county executive, but a second amended measure became law in November of 2017. We see this as a game changer. I mean, the most important thing to me is I want kids going to school fed. I don't want them dragged to emergency rooms in the middle of the night because, you know, they're not able to get child medical care the way we do. I want people to be able to pay for child care without absolutely going broke. I, I'm just thrilled. I had to get it unanimously. Let me acknowledge and thank uh, Councilmember Mark Elton. Uh, he has been fighting this battle for a long time. First one goes to Mark. <laughs> Through his leadership, his tenacity, his hard work, we are here today. That everybody's rent is calculated on the basis of rent and taxes. Throughout his political career, Mark worked to strengthen the rights of those residents who are renters through legislation he crafted that was then passed by the county council. This bill provides better access to quality rental housing and protects tenants from large rent increases and gives renters a mechanism for resolving disputes. This is what matters with legislation. It's one thing to pass a law. It's another thing to talk about a law. It's another thing to actually go sit down and do the work to make it happen. Mr. Elrich has the floor to offer amendments to the legislation. Mark Elrich will be remembered as a council member whose legislation was some of the toughest to pass through the county council. Uh, he has been a strong, uh, passionate voice for the workers of our county. He was a leader who thought independently and stood firm in his beliefs. It was always good to hear from people who felt like, you know, I had done something that was worthwhile and meaningful and had an impact on their lives. I tried real hard to find common ground, to find common sense solutions, and to bring our council together and our community together. It's, it's a privilege to be able to listen to your constituents and, and help them solve their problems and help them get their questions answered and to participate in a dialogue about the governance of this county and the big issues and the future of the county. Through this journey, I've met some really amazing people. I don't think most of Montgomery County appreciates what a tremendous community we have. And I miss the, you know, I probably miss the challenge of talking about, you know, really important issues and trying to formulate answers to those issues. I think the only regret I have is not about my service per se, but just how hard change is. Uh, our community is changing from a a suburban community to a suburban community and that has been so difficult. I know we've made a difference. I, I know that we've established a strong foundation and strong institutions to meet the needs of um, the sick, the poor, the elderly, the homeless. The one thing I didn't appreciate before I got here and I'm still kind of amazed by is the amount of work that council members have to do to get uh, community support for the right thing. I never wanted to develop a thick skin. I felt that that would dehumanize me. But then it makes you more vulnerable to when people are angry. And so that's been a hard part of my life as, as a council member. I will be remembered for my work in affordable housing. Some great uh, mechanisms to ensure a pretty strong future. Uh, we have a fiscal plan that I engineered that helps people stay on track as to our spending. I think that helps people uh, to make the right decisions when budget time comes. So minimum wage is one of those things I wish had happened a little bit sooner than a little bit later. And to be able to feel that I had done something that wasn't just changing a number and the size of a paycheck, but that the changing of the paycheck was going to be something that helped change people's lives. My hope is that they reflect on my service and see some of the things I accomplish. Our county is one of the most environmentally sustainable communities in the country. Knowing that tens of thousands of Montgomery County residents who otherwise would not have access to health care 
are able to get health care because of the network of community clinics that I founded and championed for all these years, the Montgomery Cares Network of Clinics. To learn so much about our community, to be able to be so engaged with so many different kinds of people, to understand the depth and breadth of who we are as a community. It's really been a privilege to serve the community and to be in service to the community. It's been such an incredible honor to do this. We are leaving the next council a pretty good stage. And I would tell people sometimes that uh, something might seem okay to me, but if it's not okay to you, you're the ones that have to live with it. You're the ones that have to deal with it. I know that we've helped a lot of people. You can't, you can't save everybody, uh, but I know we've made a big difference for a lot, a lot of people, too. hundreds of thousands of people. I understand that um, it's, it's time for a new set of leaders to step up. All right, thank you to our team. All right. Fantastic. We have uh, some more special moments here. I want to thank a few of our incoming council members, or all of them who are here. I see Andrew Friedson and Will Jawando and Gabriel Albernos. And I already mentioned Evan Glass. Don't worry, I already mentioned Evan Glass. <laughs> and um, now we're going to hear from a person who is, you know, someone that our outgoing council members, as well as Everyone who's here, most people in this county have worked with in very significant ways. And uh, he is also a leader who is uh, transitioning out of his current role, Mr. Isaiah Leggett, who, please come up, is uh, his remarkable service. Is we, those of you are, who are here, yes. We, we gave Mr. Leggett a uh, farewell uh, two weeks ago, I think, so. Uh, we were really proud to do that, and we're glad you're here today, Mr. Leggett. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me first of all thank the uh, public information staff for a wonderful video that I think captured a lot of the work, but I think the spirit and the hard work that you've accomplished over a number of years. Uh, unfortunately, the videos sometimes have the essence of making what you do seem easy. but much of what you accomplished collectively and individually, you did under some very difficult circumstances and conditions. Uh, working as a legislator, and especially in a very demanding county, as Roger pointed out in the film, it's not always easy, it's tough. But to assume office at a time of a great recession and to work through that is even more difficult. And look at the results, whether you're talking about George and healthcare, and Nancy and housing, and Roger in the environmental area, and Mark on minimum wage and, and public safety, and all that you've done collectively, I think this county, our region, owe you a great deal of gratitude and respect for your very hard work and accomplishments. The fact that in public housing today, uh, we have now over 77,000 affordable housing units that we are managing, maintained, or constructed. As George has indicated, the improvement in health care and so many other things that we've done, uh, the resiliency and the transportation network that we've established, uh, the improvements that we had in public safety, uh, the renowned public safety headquarters and training academy. And when we stand here today, and we talk about the future uh, for our great county. 
uh, look at where we were in 2006 going through the recession where our reserves were down very, very low. That's about 2.3 or 4%. And we've advanced in so many others. We are now at 9.4% heading toward 10%. We're talking about a county that had just over $200,000 in reserves. We're talking about half a billion dollars in financial reserves today. Many of the accomplishments in schools, in transportation, across the board, that you've helped accomplish under some very difficult circumstances and conditions. So on behalf of our 1.1 million residents, on behalf of all the people who will benefit from what you've done, I want to stand before you and thank you personally for your great work and accomplishments. I know there will be some other speakers, so I don't want to hold too much time, but I've got a couple of presentations to make. And for you, we decided to frame them this time. So. <laughs> Is that out of your budget or Mark's? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, let me first call Roger. While Roger comes up, I want to recognize Mayor Newton's here and Mayor Ashman and former Council Administrator Steve Farber. County Executive of Montgomery County, Maryland awards this certificate to Roger Belina in recognition and appreciation of your 12 years providing thoughtful and pragmatic leadership to the Montgomery County Council and the residents of Montgomery County. Your efforts to guide transit-oriented development, commitment to create environmental sustainable communities, and advocacy for accountability from utility companies have been invaluable, have been an invaluable contribution to our county. Your determination to improve our libraries and serve our seniors, disabled, and those in need will have a lasting impact for residents for years to come. I want to express my gratitude and congratulations on the occasion of your retirement and wish you much, much success in all your future endeavors. And sign today's state. Congratulations. County Executive of Montgomery County, Maryland, awards this certificate to Mark Eldridge, council member at large, in recognition and appreciation of your 12 years providing outstanding leadership and dedicated service as a member of the county council. Through your advocacy for improved tenant protections, increased minimum wage, and a fair chance for formerly incarcerated individuals, you have made a difference in the lives of many whose voices often are not heard. Your leadership on responsible land use and com community involvement, combined with her creativity on solutions, including the bus rapid transit system, has been invaluable to everyone seeking to maintain the county's quality of life and economic vitality. I want to express my gratitude for your independent, straightforward approach to making government work for all of our residents, and I wish you much success in your old, new role as county executive next week. Congratulations. <laughs> Nancy Fleury. <laughs> County Executive Montgomery County, Maryland, awards this certificate to Nancy Fleury, council member at large, in recognition and appreciation of your 16 years of outstanding service and dedication to the residents of Montgomery County. I greatly appreciate your excellent guidance on both Fed Committee Chair and former Chair of the TNE Committee, along with your leadership as a two-term Council President, your commitment and strong advocacy for the residents of Montgomery County, 
is invaluable. I wish to express my I wish to uh, I wish you much success in all of your future endeavors and congratulations as you begin your next chapter in life. And it's signed by me today, today. Congratulations. George? Sure. County Executive Montgomery County, Maryland, awards this certificate to George Leventhal, council member at large. In recognition and appreciation of your 16 years providing outstanding leadership and dedicated service as a member of the county council, as chair of the Council of Health and Human Service Committee, you work diligently on behalf of county residents who, most, who, who are most in need of government on their side. Your contributions to the betterment of our county go beyond your work as a council member and are reflected in the strong policies you have helped enact to make Montgomery County a better place to live, work, and raise a family. I want to express my gratitude for, to you for being a partner and a true team player. I wish you much success in many years to come in your future endeavors. Congratulations. Thank you. To all the incoming council members um, and many who have served here for a substantial period of time, and we have a number of them who are here, and I hope that you recognize them, uh, let me again express uh, gratitude for your hard work, uh, the accomplishments, I think, have placed the county in a better, better position than we found it, and have laid the foundation for much success in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ike, and thank you. Yes. We also have some proclamations. So once again, and one last time, you've stolen our thunder. Thank you. <laughs> I want to, I'm teasing, that's jokes. Sorry, Sydney, it's a jokes. Uh, a few people who have joined us, uh, Phil Andrews, former council member, and Gail Ewing, and Bruce Adams, former council members. Charlie Barkley, uh, Sheriff Popkin, and I mentioned Howie Dennis, but so many people have asked me to mention his name again that I'm gonna do that, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting next to the county executive. And Joan Kleiman from Senator Chris Van Hollen's office. Well, I mentioned Steve Silverman already as well, but uh, twice is good. And I want to thank Mark Elridge for sharing that photo with our video team. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> well, you're assuming that was an old photo. All right. So now we're going to have a, uh, a part of the program that will seem familiar, um, but is different. <clears throat> and that is Nancy Navarro will present a proclamation uh, and a reflection to Councilmember George Leventhal. We'll invite Mr. Leventhal to join Nancy at the front of the room and then we'll proceed in that fashion as well. All right, Councilmember Dr. Leventhal, AKA Jorge, I am thrilled to present you this proclamation. And before I do that, I do want to acknowledge uh, that, you know, this, this really is a family. I mean, it's very strange because we do spend a lot of time together. I think more than probably we spend with our own families. And so it's gonna be strange uh, to, um, you know, to be here without some of you guys. Um, and we have learned so much from each other. You share a lot of uh, personal things and you do go through a lot of personal, um, you know, issues. And uh, so this is gonna be an interesting transition, uh, but I have been really, uh, truly honored to have served uh, with my, 
my, all my colleagues in particular. And so before I read this extraordinary proclamation, I just wanted to share two anecdotes, George, uh, that speak to how we are really here to help each other. So on my very first year serving on the county council, I did attend the uh, Arts and Humanities Ball, which is coming up soon. And I'm standing next to George in the receiving line, and this gentleman comes through and um, says hi to George. And then he reaches over to me and he says, you're such a good trooper to be here with your husband. You're so supportive. <laughs> and before I could be say, no, it's the other Latina lady, uh, the person had moved on, so I just, Playing along, so we help each other, you know, in moments of personal. And then the other time that George actually helped me out was when uh, I was invited to speak at BCC High School. My daughter was a member of this uh, leadership class for for all girls, and um, we had had some some session here. And George made a comment, something like, "Well, I am now going to give myself credit for X and Y, right?" And I thought, wow, that's really interesting how George does that. So I go to this, I go to this class, and I'm a speaker. And one of the girls asked, "Well, how, you know, how can we as girls give ourselves more credit? You know, how can we promote ourselves better?" And I was like, "Wow, I have a clip for you that we can like share. You can learn quite a bit, and have a guys do it, and we can do it too. So thank you, George, for <laughs> that as well. So." Um, then I was, you know, I'm going to miss also speaking Spanish to George. Anyway, so here is the proclamation, which is amazing. Maybe I should read this one because, you know, my eyes. This proclamation reads, Whereas George Leventhal served 16 years as an at-large member of the Montgomery County Council, he was first elected to the council in 2002 and served as council president in 2006 and 2015. And since 2002 and... I don't know why I said that. And whereas George has chaired the Council's Health and Human Services Committee, where he oversaw programs for county residents who have the greatest needs and led the effort to create Montgomery Cares, which is a partnership with community clinics that provide health care to the uninsured from fiscal year 2005 through fiscal year 2018. Montgomery Cares has served more than 100,000 patients through 861,501 clinic visits pharmacy services, and specialty care. And whereas George championed the housing first model for Montgomery County, moving people into permanent housing by reducing barriers and avoiding delays while people connect to other support services and has supported efforts that focus on outcomes including the 100,000 homes effort, which housed the medically vulnerable and has participated in the point in time count seven times which is a count of sheltered and unsheltered homeless persons on a single night in January. And we're asked in December 2015, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Devel Development announced that through Georgia's efforts, the county had effectively ended veterans' homelessness, and the Zero 2016 initiative has housed more than 58 veterans and adopted a policy that there will be no more than six veterans awaiting permanent housing. And whereas the county is now on course to effectively end chronic homelessness by the end of 2018, housing 397 people since January 2016, and George and the Interagency agency Commission on Homelessness have committed to move forward with a plan to focus on effectively ending youth and family homelessness. And whereas as a co-founder and ex-officio board member of Purple Line Now, he has worked tirelessly to promote the Purple Line and ensure its construction, and the Purple Line broke ground in August 2017. And whereas before the County Council, George served as Legislative Director and Legislative Assistant for U.S. Senator Barbara A. Mikulski of Maryland, and from 1996 to 2001, he served as Chairman of the Montgomery County Democratic Central Committee. And whereas, George holds a BA in English from the University of California at Berkeley and an MPA from the John Hopkins University and a PhD in public policy from the University of Maryland while serving on the county council. He was doing that. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland hereby honors George Leventhal, presented on this 27th day of November in the year 2018. Thank you, George, for your extraordinary service.
the first bill that George passed as identified by uh, his staff. Uh, we do have here, let's see, we do have a zoning text amendment, I believe, and uh, this one uh, was 0317, and it was for off-street parking for bicycles. Very important. And bill number 60-14, human rights and civil liberties, earn sick and safe leave. Uh, here we go, we work together on this, and uh, it's just amazing. So this is just a, a small sample of what you have in mind. Thank you, Nancy and George. And now Sydney Katz will present for to Nancy Florine. Proclamation for you, Nancy. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm the woman. Yeah. And, How and soon they forget. And while we're waiting, I did want to introduce from the audience David Stewart is here, who's Nancy's spouse. As as many of you know, David is a, a, a celebrated author, and he certainly writes about political political people. So we can't wait for the book about Nancy. But but. <coughs> It's a book about everybody else. About everybody else. <laughs> I'm sure that's what he told you, Nancy. I'm sure that's what he told you. But, you know, it, as, as Nancy Navarro pointed out, and of course, as many of you know, there's been more people named Nancy on this county council than any other name. But, but uh, it certainly is going to be very different without, with only one Nancy here. And we, Nancy Florine and Nancy Navarro, as, as all my other colleagues, have certainly been great mentors to me. I sincerely appreciated all their help, and, and I know that that they will not be far f from us because they certainly have never been shy on any topic before, and I don't believe they'll be shy today. But we do also have a uh, proclamation. Whereas Nancy Florine served four terms as an at-large member of the Montgomery County Council, she was first elected to the council in 2002 and served as council president in 2010 and 2016. And whereas she served as the chair of the council's transportation and environmental Environment Committee, and as chair of the Council's Planning, Housing, and Economic Development Fed Committee, and as the Fed chair, Nancy led the Council through numerous master plans, established long-term and innova innovative strategies for community development, and spearheaded the county's zoning code rewrite, as you saw her burying it before, whereas Nancy sponsored numerous pieces of legislation that created incentives for and facilitated the production of affordable housing, including modernizing the county's moderately priced dwelling units, MPDU program, which offers more affordable homes to the county residents and established tax credits for homeowners and seniors. And whereas she created the Montgomery Business Development Corporation to make the county's economic development operations more competitive and welcoming for businesses, large and small, which ultimately became the current Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation. And whereas as council president in 2010, she led the council through the Great Recession and established the county's fiscal plan, which helped to maintain the county's AAA bond rating. And whereas as council president in 2016, she developed an education first budget that provided more teachers, paraeducators, and student support positions and expended uh, expanded programs to support student achievement and enhance college career readiness and provided added resources for school construction and whereas before the county council Nancy served in the civil division federal programs branch with the US Department of Justice she was appointed to two terms as a member of the Montgomery County Planning Board worked for US Senator Barbara McCauley and that's I guess a reoccurring pattern here and served one and a half terms as mayor of Garrett Park and whereas Nancy holds a bachelor's degree in American studies from Smith College and a law degree from Rutgers University, now therefore it be resolved th uh, that, and, and that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby honors Nancy Florine. It's signed by the President Hans Reamer today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Was the first. 
Nobody it was to make it was to make buggy, buggy whips illegal in Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> The, the first uh. one that she had is ZTA 0303, which was the C2 zone and, uh, enacted in 2003. This ZTA allows health clubs in the CT zone under certain circumstances. Now, I didn't make this one up. In parenthesis, <laughs> it says too old to provide link to full bill. So I just... <laughs> I, I'm assuming it meant the legislation, but... but um, uh, yeah. <laughs> also, the, her last one, which is Bill 3417, which is housing for moderately, moderately priced dwelling units amendment, which we heard so much about in throughout her oh. career, and it really is her legacy. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sydney. You better watch out, brother. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll have Tom Hucker presenting to Council Member Berliner. Before I, before I begin, I'm going to forget to uh, mention that Karen Berliner, Jesse, and Owen are all in the audience as well and haven't been recognized. So where are they? Um, <clears throat> Roger, I just want to say um, what an honor it has been to work with you. Uh, when I sp started considering running for the council four years ago, I... Um, I called each of the returning council members to seek a meeting with them to find out what it was really like to serve on the council, and, and many of them even called me back. Um, <laughs> and no, I, I, I actually, I met with them all. But the meeting with Roger, I remember uh, like it was yesterday, because it lasted two hours, and you were so encouraging uh, to me uh, that I left there convinced I should run for the council despite my better judgment, and uh, your encouragement has continued for four more years. So I really am, am personally grateful um, as, one, uh, yeah, as a constituent and a taxpayer here for everything you've done to encourage me the last four years. Um, you recently, two weeks ago at the tribute to Ike, said the county executive was a real blessing for the county, and you're right. But I, I believe the same could be said of you, um, because I've worked with a lot of elected officials at this point, and um, as much as anyone I know, I really feel like you value leadership by example, um, in that you are not afraid to show political courage and stick your neck out on thorny issues, complicated issues, ones that are often controversial uh, in your own district in particular, um, and ones where you're a, ahead of your time but now have become more mainstream, whether it's transit-oriented development and concentrating our development around transit station many years ago, um, improving our multimodal uh, tr funding for, tr for our, our transit, uh, all the way continuing through the dedicated funding for Metro, the historic agreement that was struck uh, during your leadership of uh, the Council of Governments uh, last year, um, uh, doubling down on um, making those communities safe by passing Vision Zero so that people can actually bike and walk to their transit stations and access this first-class transit that you're funding. Um, and then, um, you know, continuing even after that to make sure we have a first-class community. I remember so well being a member of the House Economic Matters Committee six years ago when we had one of the worst performing utilities in the country and the leadership shown in the video that you showed um, giving uh, then-Delegate Feldman and I and the governor the backbone of the reliability bill, that the historic reliability bill that has transformed our community by changing the one of the least reliable utilities into a first-class utility. Uh, we're on that path because of the leadership you, you showed, not just at the county level, but helping us pass state-level legislation that hadn't been passed and was long overdue. So I'm really grateful um, to you for that. And um, as much as your leadership uh, on any of those individual issues is so important, I think it's your style uh, is, that's as important as the substance. Because um, you really, not only do you show up for every committee hearing, relentlessly prepared, with unceasing attention to detail, but you're so respectful to the staff, to all the witnesses, to each of us. You try to persuade us um, to your point of view. You seek the common ground on all these thorny issues and invite us to join you there. Um, 
and it is happening at a time when there's such great polarization um, in our political discourse all over the country, you really buck the trend and I think set the example for how we all ought to behave in public service. So I'm really grateful um, for the, the style you show as well as the substance. And um, with, the, um, with that, I just want to say you've been such an outstanding leader. This, this council, the committee, the council of governments, and I am counting on you to stay very involved and continue to share your advice and encouragement. So with that, let me read this proclamation um, and settle in. Roger has so many accomplishments. It's quite long. There's an intermission after the sixth paragraph <laughs> if you need to go to the bathroom. Um, it says, the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, whereas Roger Berliner served three terms as the District 1 Council Member of the Montgomery County Council, he was first elected the Council in 2006 and served as Council President in 2011 and 2017 whereas he served as chair of the council's Transportation, Infrastructure, Energy, and Environment Committee from 2010 to 2018. As the committee chair, Roger led the charge on creating more multimodal transportation options. And whereas Roger guided the council to unanimously support rapid transit and was the lead sponsor on moving the county forward in adopting an urban road code bill that will narrow lanes, slow traffic through our urban nodes, and provide for greater pedestrian and bicycle safety. And whereas he worked diligently to support the creation of vibrant, walkable, and transit-oriented communities in White Flint and Bethesda while protecting existing neighborhoods and pushing for adequate parks, schools, and transportation infrastructure. And whereas as a committed environmentalist, he's been the author of more than two dozen laws that make the county one of the most sustainable communities in the country, which includes ensuring that our county buys 100% renewable power and providing unprecedented protection to Ten Mile Creek from the threat of overdevelopment, and whereas his background as an energy lawyer allowed him to play a lead role for the county and in the state in requiring PEPCO to improve its electric reliability, and he founded the Coalition for Utility Reform that pressed the Maryland Public Service Commission to require more clean, distributed energy, and whereas Roger served two terms as a member of the Council's Health and Human Services Committee, where he has been a strong advocate for seniors, library users, the disabled, those experiencing food insecurity, and local and small business owners, and where pr whereas prior to the county council, he served as legislative director for U.S. Senator Howard Metzenbaum, policy advisor to U.S. Congressman Henry Waxman, senior policy advisor to the California State Legislature, and the director of congressional liaison for a federal agency in the Carter administration. And <laughs> whereas Roger obtained his law degree from McGeorge School of Law in Sacramento, California, and his undergraduate degree from Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire, now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County hereby honors Roger Berliner on this 27th day of November, signed by Hans Riemer. Congratulations. And the moment, the moment you've all been waiting for knowing what was Roger's first bill, although I think you all know, uh, you say it with me, it's Bill 2907, <laughs> Environmental Sustainability Climate Protection Motor Vehicles, and Bill 19, and his most significant bill was, of course, Bill 1914, Renewable Energy County Purchase. The first bill enacted in 2007 calls for the county's vehicle fleet to use more biodiesel fuel and increase the, fuels, the fleet's fuel efficiency. Um, by limiting the use of SUVs and setting gas mileage standards. It also calls on the county to actively encourage telecommuting. And the second bill from 2014 requires that at least half of the county's electric power comes from renewable sources by uh, fiscal 2015 and that all of the county's power comes from renewable sources by fiscal 2016. Together those bills have made us a, a national leader in environmental protection and renewable energy, along with many of Roger's other bills, too numerous to name today. Uh, he's laid so much groundwork that we're going to continue to build on in your old committee. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Tom and Roger. And now, Council Member Rice will present to Council Member and County Executive Elect Mark Elrich. Mark and I are laughing because this is funny. 
All of you guys are thinking it. I know you are. Um, no, it's 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 really an interesting thing because uh, a lot of folks are like, so Craig picked Mark to do his. Some people are like, oh, he got the short straw. <laughs> That's not. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm going to tell you. For anybody who knows me, uh, and who knows about what I care about. Um, I care about people who dedicate themselves to service, to truly making their community a better place, and the sacrifices that are associated with that. Mark has truly been a committed public servant for so long, not only as a teacher and giving back to his community and making sure that he educated folks in some of the most needy areas in our county at Rolling Terrace Elementary School but also when it comes to serving on the Tacoma Park City Council, um, because all of those things, and we all know, those of you who are either the family members of elected, who are staff of elected, who are, or who are elected themselves know, this is a giving profession. This is something of where, regardless of where we may stand in terms of position on a particular issue, the reality is, is that we give of ourselves day and night to ensure that we're trying to make this a better place for people other than ourselves. And that's something that Mark has been committed to for a tremendously long time, and I applaud him for that. You know, yes. It's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when you look back on some of the things that even were the things where Mark and I might have found ourselves on uh, different sides, the reality is, is we both wanted the same thing for our community. And it speaks something to where we talk about, and we've heard about the discourse uh, that continues to exist on the national stage, but it highlights how it can be done right here in Montgomery County. You've seen from all of our colleagues today who have their varied special interests in terms of those special uh, things that they cared about and wanted to make sure uh, were moved forward here in the county and made our county a better place, and every single one of them were able to successfully move the needle forward and make those kinds of things happen. There aren't a lot of jurisdictions who can say that, and there aren't a lot of people out there who can do those kinds of things. I welcome the new council members, but I will tell you that each of you have big shoes to fill because the folks that we are losing are amazing public servants, and we thank them for their service. That's right, and, 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 and you have to make sure that you're a style maven like Mark Elrich, too. <laughs> That's right. All right, so proclamation. Whereas Mark Elrich first elected to the Montgomery County Council in 2006, has served 12 years as an at-large member of the Montgomery County Council, and on December 3rd, he will be sworn in as the County Executive of Montgomery County. And whereas from December 2006 to November 2014, he served on the Council's Public Safety Committee and on the Council's Planning, Housing, and Economic Development Committee, and since December 2014, he has served as Chair of the Council's Public Safety Committee and on the Council's Education Committee, along with me, and whereas he has made a significant impact on labor issues that are important to county residents and has led two successful efforts to raise the minimum wage in the county and supported advancing paid family sick and safe leave legislation. He also worked to give a second chance to people with criminal records by banning the box on job applications that ask about convictions and incarceration. And whereas Mark has introduced or supported transportation initiatives which have begun the design and implementation of our rapid transit system for Montgomery County to add a meaningful and comprehensive transit alternative to get cars off the road and reduce emissions and connect people from where they live to where they work. And whereas his passion to protect the environment led him to shielding the CNO Canal from construction in the view shed and help fight against the use of tire waste on playgrounds and athletic fields, and whereas Mark has worked diligently to improve the housing and tenant challenges of the county uh, that folks face and has strengthened tenant rights through legislation after serving on the tenants work group 
and it's fought to ensure that developers pay their fair share to improve schools and traffic problems. And whereas before his work on the council, Mark served on the Tacoma Park City Council from 1987 until 2006, and from 1989 to 2006, uh, if anybody doesn't know, Mark was a teacher. Um, he taught at, it's a little inside joke for staff. He taught at Rolling Terrace Elementary School, and whereas Mark earned his BA in history from the University of Maryland and a master's degree in teaching from Johns Hopkins University, now therefore be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland hereby honors our next county executive and outgoing county council member, Mark Elridge, presented this 27th day of November in the year 2018. Congratulations, Mark. So, Mr. County Executive Elect, your first bill, do you know what your first bill is? Uh, so, your first bill was a zoning ordinance in establishing setback for accessory structures from national park property. <laughs> All of you who are like, yeah, it's like, uh, Okay, we know who the policy wonks in the audience are. <laughs> and then, of course, your most important bill, the one that's most relevant to you, is our minimum wage bill that was enacted in 2014. So congratulations. You have a storied uh, history and uh, something to look back on in terms of the tremendous work you've done in being able to serve our community. Congratulations, Mark. Well, that was so nice. Thank you to council staff for your help in putting that together. And I understand there may be some gifts that have... Uh... Yes, at this moment in time, the official TV cameras are being turned off. Um, and it's council staff's turn to pay our tribute. And um, we were trying to think of how we could um, express our great respect and admiration for you as public servants and our affection for you as members of the council of staff. Sounds sincere. But instead we decided to do something else. Um, and um, we are going to, for each of you, tell you um, the, the clauses we may have put in your proclamations had we had the opportunity to write that. Um, so we're going to start with council member Elrich and ask you to come down first to be greeted by staff. 